Thank you. Uh, thank you, everyone, and uh, thank you for attending this presentation. So, the title is Mobian to Stable and Beyond because right now we've been only doing some development release. But first, what is Mobian? Uh, you could think of it as a Debian derivative or in Debian language, a blend, which is targeting mobile devices such as smartphones and tablets. Uh, we provide a separate package repository, but it's not a standalone distribution, right? And uh, we have some ready-to-use disk images which are built for several devices, and uh, more on that later. But Mobian is actually a very, very small overlay. In our whole package repository, we have 44 source packages. Uh, compared to 35,000 and more on Debian itself. So it's really some tiny bits. And actually, we have planned to drop some of those packages. And my hope is that basically one year from now, we will be down to something like 15 or maybe 20 packages at most. Uh, because we have some transitional packages. And actually, the most difficult to get rid of will be device support packages where we have downstream patch kernels and stuff like that. But in the end, Mobian isn't supposed to be a long-term project. It's really supposed to be merged into Debian itself and just improve the overall Debian ecosystem rather than being a standalone project aimed solely at mobile users. Uh, the question we have been seeing a lot lately over the past few months is basically where can I find the latest Mobian stable image? Uh, you can't because it doesn't exist yet. Uh, we target Debian testing, which is a moving target. You could think of it as a kind of rolling release distribution. And the Debian testing distro is frozen every once in a while. It's about every once every two years. And then moved on to Debian Stable. The lat latest stable, stable release from Debian was Bullseye, which was released a bit less than two years ago. And back then, we definitely weren't ready for prime time. Uh, for example, we had version 0.6.8.2, while we now up to version 0.24 for the compositor and shell sides. And there's been a lot of progress over the past two years. Back when Boostly was released, we didn't have uh, stuff like EG25 Manager, which is basically a piece of software handling the PinePhone and PinePhone Pro modem, configuring it properly to work as we expect. We didn't have MMS. We have very few adaptive applications because LibAdwaita at the time was not even existing. We had LibHandy but no GTK4 and no LibAdwaita. And so in the end, we decided against releasing a stable Mobian version for Bullseye. And the ecosystem was only starting to ramp up. There were still lots of issues and bugs and instabilities, and really a low count of actually usable mobile applications. So what does going stable mean for Mobian? Uh, if you look back at the Bookworm development cycle, which is basically the past two years, we've seen some great progress, both in the overall mobile ecosystem and in Debian itself. Uh, the ecosystem is really, really richer than it was before, and it's still growing, and more and more people are creating uh, or modifying applications so they can run just fine on our tiny displays here. Uh, Graphical environments are more usable and way more stable than they used to be. I mean, if you've been using Fosh like two years ago, uh, it was all tapping buttons and trying to get the things right. Last year, we had the swipes, which was a huge usability improvement. And overall, lots of bugs were fixed, so it can run smoothly on many devices. And that's just awesome. And we even uploaded a lot of packages we were uh, hosting downstream 
to Debian itself. And that even includes some Mobian specific package, such as the splash screen theme, the installer settings, the repository keyring also. So we have the GPG keys for Mobian also in Debian now. So if there's another mishap, it happened last year, we let the GPG key expire and user was stuck and had to download those manually. Now they'll be able to just update the keys from upstream Debian and still have access to the Mobian repo. Uh, we had also fixed some early mistakes and some optimal choices regarding how we name packages, how we organize those, and how we decided to uh, ship all the device support tweaks. For example, we used to have for each device one tweaks package, one support package, which was just a meta package pulling in all the dependencies. Right now for Qualcomm devices, we have two packages which are in Debian itself. Those are QCOM font utils, which contains all the tweaks which are common to every Qualcomm supported device. And we have Droid Juicer as well, which I'll tell a bit more in a minute. And in the end, now seems a good time to finally go stable. So what will it look like? We'll have support for the devices we already support basically. So those are the Linux first phones, PinePhone, PinePhone Pro and the Librem 5. We also have some Qualcomm based devices. Uh, mostly SDM 845, thanks to the awesome work the community has done on this kernel. Uh, and of course, we also ship some x86 images with or without non-free firmware, depending on what you want. And it runs just fine, for example, on the Microsoft Surface Pro and Surface Go tablets. Uh, this is uh, really awesome. We'll also ship two flavors of Mobian, one with Posh and the other one with SXMO. We would have loved to ship a Plasma Mobile flavor as well, but this won't make it. I'm pleased to announce that Plasma Mobile is finally in Debian itself, but we only have the basics, which are the calls, uh, contact book, SMS application, and settings application, and of course the Plasma Mobile shell. But that's not enough to ship a stable image based on Plasma Mobile, so we'll keep that one and start releasing it for the 3XC development cycle, which is the next Debian testing. And of course, we'll ship an LTS kernel and we'll commit to keep it up to date with security updates and try to update it as often as possible for all the supported devices. We also gonna ship some kind of semi-universal images. Uh, one thing we'd like to achieve with Mobian is that you could just ship one image and flash it on any supported device. And the kernel would support the device. All the small config tweaks needed for this device would be applied automatically. The firmware could be extracted and so on. And we didn't quite get there yet, but we're getting closer. For example, on the SDM845 devices, those are Android-based devices and they need some proprietary firmware blobs to just work. The thing is, this firmware is shipped by the phone manufacturer. There's no clear license allowing you to redistribute it. So we just can't package those into Debian and call it a day. This is where I came from. I came with a Droid Juicer. The thing is, this is a small runtime program. It runs on boot. It mounts the Android vendor partitions, fetches the firmware from there, and copies it into the Linux user space root file system. And then afterwards, you rebuild the initramfs, reboot the device, and on the next boot, you have your Android device with all the firmware you need running just right now without the need for uh, downloading firmware from the internet. By doing so, we also can have one image for every single SDM845 devices, one rootfs at least, because the boot image is 
using the device tree for the specific device, but you have one root file system and as many boot images as you have device supported. And it just avoids the need for any device specific tweaks. And so we hope that in the future, this can be extended to other Qualcomm based devices such as the Fairphone 4, for example, which by the way runs quite nicely on Mobian thanks to the work Luca has done so far. Uh, so that's one of the semi-universal images. The other one we're planning to implement is for all the Pine64 devices uh, because those need very few device-specific tweaks. The two of those, the Pine Phone and the Pine Tab, already share the same kernel. And all we have to do, which is not that easy, but all we have to do is basically import the downstream patches for the Pine Phone Pro into this kernel. This can happen quite easily, but we still have some things, uh, some details we need to work out, especially considering the audio configuration on those devices due to the need to have the modem properly talking to the SOC in terms of audio and, and sample rates, frequencies, and so on. Uh, so this might get pushed back a bit, but we're working on it and we really hope that it can be done for Bookworm so that we only have uh, SDM845 images, Pine64 images, and one other for the Librem 5, which needs its own kernel because basically there are some patches that are incompatible with the PinePhone Pro kernel. They share the same display, the same block for the display output and if it works on one device, it doesn't work on the other. Anyway, uh, what we'll do with during the freeze period. So basically Debian is being frozen in preparation for the stable release. We cannot have new packages in Debian starting the 12th of this month. And uh, one month later, we cannot have any update at all unless it's bug fix but we'll still be able to work on downstream packages to improve the stability and fix the remaining issues. And hopefully, but we make no promise there, we'll be able to work a bit more upstream by submitting kernel patches, uh, implementing proper tow boot support for the Librem 5 and Pine Tab, for example. And yeah, maybe uh, we could think of other things, but for now, we're focusing on trying to improve things during the few months we'll have left before the stable release. And so what's next? Once we have Mobion stable, well, we'll switch obviously to the Trixie development cycle, so tracking the next Debian testing and trying to get even better software support for mobile devices. And so we're going to try to make it easier to support new devices in Mobion this is already, we're paving, we're paving the way with the SDM845 images and the Pine64 images and trying to get to a universal image. And so we will hopefully make it easier for people to just support their own device. We will also support 64-bit RISC-5. We actually have all the bits and pieces in place. We have a dev board which is acting as a GitLab runner and is able to build packages for the, this architecture which is already supported in Debian. And so that's one, uh, we'll just flip the switch once the stable release is there. We'll keep packaging new software and uh, new options for our users, be it Plasma Mobile, as I mentioned already, Lomiri, the UB ports user interface. And finally, try to get this universal IMAID thing out of the box and uh, working smoothly. Uh, that's uh, basically it for me. You have a bunch of links there. The slides are uploaded to the website, so feel free to go there. And uh, yeah, I'm not sure we have time for any question. A little bit. So first, thank you very much. Thank you. So one minute, two minutes for questions.
Uh, well, the question was uh, for the semi-universal images where we extract firmware from the Android vendor partition. Do we have a solution for getting the updates from the vendor itself? The answer is no. You just get what you have on the device by the time it's run. You can flash a new Android uh, ROM on your device and then reinstall Mobian if needed and then it will pick the new firmware. But uh, there's no automated way and I really doubt that uh, Android phone vendors will participate in LVFS to get updates in a timely manner to users. Okay. One last question, perhaps. Um, <coughs> yes? Will it ever be possible for Mobian to be assimilated completely into upstream Debian? Uh, will it be possible for Mobian to be completely assimilated in Debian? Almost. Uh, the only thing that will be pushing us farther from this goal right now is kernel support. If we manage to get uh, fully supported devices in the upstream kernel, that means upstreaming a lot of downstream patches and doing so for any new device which will arise in the next few years, then yes, we'll be able to be completely part of Debian and have no downstream repository at all. But for now, we're being held at by the kernel situation, basically. Okay, thank you very much. We don't have more time. Thank you.